G'day everyone, welcome to New Tech. My name's Miles and it's wonderful to have you here. In today's video, we're gonna be checking out this Fox Alien Woodmad CNC machine. So let's get started. So as you know that I love building CNC machines and that's one of the things that I did from the very beginning and I learned so much from building them in the first place. But if you're a person who doesn't like to build CNC's and then start using them, this here is one of the best machines that I could probably say that you could buy as a beginner to get you started and one that's gonna last you a long, long time. So this one here is similar to those 3018 machines that you can buy from China. If you've used those before, you'll find that they're very flimsy and uh, they tend to wobble all over the place. But this one here is a complete overhaul and is an extremely rigid machine. Now this one comes with linear rails, the HGR15 linear rails, comes with a 300 watt spindle and comes pretty much assembled um, from the box. You just have to put together the, the vertical gantry, add on the spindle and then connect on the wiring. Now that took me probably about half an hour from the beginning, from opening up the box, putting the machine together, reading the instructions, the very comprehensive instructions and I went through and put this machine together. I did check to see if everything was perpendicular with my right angle, um, but this machine was the easiest CNC machine that I've ever put together in my life. So usually it takes me three months to put it together a CNC, but one that I could put together in 30 minutes and get going straight away, you know, I am extremely impressed. And one of the things that I love to do when I see a new CNC machine is I always grab the end of the spindle and give it a good shake. Um, and when I did that with this machine, I was absolutely mind blown. There is no movement in this spindle whatsoever. So that means to me that this machine is a very high quality build and is gonna be extremely sturdy to use. So I'm going to be pushing the limits of this machine, seeing what it can do, cutting timber, doing 3D cuts, and also cutting some metal as well. So let's get straight into the first part, which I'm gonna talk about um, the spoil board. Now, as you can see that this is a, a completely aluminum bed and there are M6 threads into this aluminum bed. That is really, really great um, because it keeps it nice and flat, also allows you to hold down your stock really easily using those inserts. And it also comes with some really cool uh, little hold down clamps as well. Now, one of the things that um, I tend to do is uh, I like to go a little bit further down beyond my stock when I'm doing some of my cuts, which means that I'm gonna go into that aluminum bed. So to avoid doing that, what I've done first of all is I've cut a waste board using my larger CNC machine. So I've just cut that out of MDF. I think this is about a 12 mil MDF. Now I will be planing this down to make it um, flat or perpendicular, doing a facing tool path over this um, on this machine to make sure everything is ready to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this, but I've also um, created a fence as well. Now a fence is just easy so it can go alongside that spoil board. It will stick up a little bit higher that I can nudge all my material up against and help hold that down as well to make sure that it's nice and perpendicular to my work surface. So, but before I do that, I need to mount this, surface it, and then I can add on my fence later on. For this one, I've just added five different M6 screws. I have ordered nylon M6 screws so I can put them in there. And the reason for using nylon is that if I accidentally cut into it, it's not gonna be a big issue. That cutter is just gonna go straight through it. But for today, I'm gonna to be using metal screws. I'm not a big fan of doing that just because I don't want to accidentally nick it and cause any issues with my tool paths. But for today, I use the metal ones and when I receive those nylons later, I'll replace them as well. So let's go ahead and um, install this. It's gonna be super easy. So I've gone ahead and installed that uh, spore board and it is absolutely stuck to that surface. That's not gonna go anywhere at all. So I'm really happy about that design. Um, what I've done beforehand, I've gone ahead and inserted this. This is a, a facing end mill, so it has a flat bottom to it. It's uh, 15 mil wide, so I'll be able to get nice, um, clean, flat path as it runs over the top of the surface. And what I had to do, I had a whole stack from another machine of these tiny little collets. It comes with, this machine comes with a 3.175 mil collet. Um, but I've needed a six mil collet. So if you're going ahead and purchasing one of these machines, I certainly suggest purchasing a whole lot of different end mills. So these facing end mills, plus this is a two flute end mill. 
um, it's a six mil and I've got that in a six mil collet which I'll be using later on for this video. However, the machine does come with a couple of engraving tool bits. Buy these parts when you purchase this machine so you're ready to go as soon as it arrives. So what I'm gonna do now is go ahead and zero this off in the far corner and start my facing tool path. So let's get started. So as usual, I jumped into the deep end and started milling some metal, started with some copper, and that worked out pretty well. The first go worked out, um, well, it failed the first time around, but the second go worked out much nicer. And I came out with this little ninja star kind of looking shape. Um, it is beautiful, that brass was pretty tough to get through for um, this spindle. I did know there was a lot of chatter, and I did notice when I was watching it, a lot of the chatter happened through the main shaft of the spindle. The rest of the machine stayed really really strong and didn't move at all um, and so I think that in the future if I wanted to keep on using this for milling metal um, maybe upgrading the spindle mount you can get a much larger spindle mount to use with like a Makita router or something like that which you can go more than double the power of this 300 watt but this 300 watt did a lot of hard work for me and I did push it through its limits and it still came out um, really really nicely on a lot of the stuff that I pushed it through The second part is I put it onto some aluminium. This is three mil aluminium. Once again, the contour, I just took it easy. I took the step downs nice and slow and it came out beautifully.
Then I moved on to milling some um, timber as well. So I started with just this sample piece here and uh, wanted to try a six millimeter end mill. So I started with two flute six mil um, and that worked out pretty well, but um, I did go a little bit too deep at times. But once again, the adaptive tool clearing worked out really nicely, but the, the contour, the, the single line around the outside did get a little bit of chatter into that contour there. Um, but as a sample piece, I thought, well, what next? Uh, I threw a six mil ball end mill into it, and it, then it went through and did the beautiful um, carving around the outside to make that nice and smooth. So I'm really happy with the ability to swap out a larger end mill on this spindle, and it certainly could handle what I threw at it. So then I moved on to doing something a little bit bigger. I started with this one here, um, starting with the adaptive tool clearing. That was super easy. And for this one, I swapped my tool over to a roughing end mill or a, a corn cob end mill. Um, this is a six mil once again, and it absolutely tore through this material really beautifully. So I'm really happy with the result of the, uh, the cob end mill on the end there. Um, when that cob end mill went into the outside, you don't traditionally use that, I suppose, to do a, a contour, but I, I just chose to give it a go because um, it was already attached. Um, and I did dive in, I think I started with six mil um, depth of cut, and that was a lot for that spindle to handle. It was chattering everywhere. So I backed off a lot more, and I think I had to drop it down to about one mil step down. Um, and then it was absolutely fine. Now to finish off, I threw in some red cedar here. This is Australian red cedar um, and it went through absolutely beautiful. I learnt from all my mistakes from doing this one and I went to my one mil step down around the edge just using that cob end mill and this is beautiful. I'm really happy with the outcome of this little bowl that I made um, and using this spindle. This machine is really, really cool. I'm, I'm really impressed in the size of the machine, also the quality of the build. Um, but as I said before, I would like to swap over that spindle to something a little bit more high power where that shaft didn't um, struggle getting through that material. For this machine to handle everything I throw at it, you know, I'm really impressed in what this can do. And I highly suggest anyone wanting to get into CNC and they wanna grab a machine for the first time, this is certainly a fantastic machine and going for the 300 watt spindle to start off with would be a fantastic idea. And then obviously if you want to up it from there, they can get another spindle mount and chuck another type of spindle on the end of this uh, CNC. So Box Alien and Woodmads have really come up with a great product here. It's an all-in-one, it's easy to start up, it's super strong using those linear rails and also those huge ball screws as well. And I couldn't thank them enough for sending this product through to me to give it a trial. I'm really happy with it and I look forward to the projects up and coming. So if you did like this video today, don't forget to subscribe, like my video, and I'll see you next time.